For the record, I'm Marcia Clark. Uh, uh, this is the last day of my show of paintings at Blue Mountain Gallery. It's October 30th, 2021. And uh, it's, it's called From the Aegean to the Arctic. And uh, this corner is a good place to begin because you have the Aegean over here and the Arctic over here. Uh, this painting is uh, a, a view in Santorini, and this one is uh, the Muldrow Glacier uh, at Denali in Alaska. Um, I've been traveling and kind of in love with both places for a while. I've been uh, going to the Arctic almost annually since um, uh, the mid-90s. And um, I rediscovered Greece. I was there, can you believe it, in 1959. And uh, 60 years later, I got back there. It was or as it was kind of serendipity. I had been painting a mural in Greenland on a shipping container that was in, uh, situated on a path in a little village, uh, Umanak, uh, in Greenland. And uh, so they had asked me to do the painting on the shipping container. It was a wonderful project. I, I did this for a children's home uh, that was in Umanak. And I read, I, when I was looking through for international residencies, um, I, um, I saw this residency in Crete that was um, for, uh, which invited you to, invited the participants to uh, work on murals in a, poor section of uh, Heraklion. And uh, I thought, yeah, why not? And so that was my opportunity to go back. And I had never been to Santorini, and the place intrigued me. So uh, I actually started out in Santorini. So. Um, Okay, so this is briefly this. I, I just want to mention, I have a little painting down at the bottom that uh, uh, is of the um, Muldrow Glacier. It's the moraine, moraine uh, at the Muldrow Glacier, uh, done actually in the late 90s. And, uh, there was a kind of change in its history. The glacier started to speed up and in March. And uh, I guess I'm getting to this prematurely. This is kind of the end of my talk, but we're going to go back to the beginning. Um, I usually work on site. In this case, I had been there, but uh, it was the pandemic, I was uh, stuck at home, but there was a wonderful video put out by the uh, Park Service and there were photographs. And uh, uh, so I worked from those and, uh, um, but getting back to Santorini, um, Feels like a long trip. <laughs> um, okay, so um, you'll see some little studies in the back, and we, we can go back there afterwards. Um, uh, the studies were done while I was in transit and while I was in Europe, but uh, and the large paintings were done over the past uh, two years, year and a half, uh, in my studio. Um, but both places really intrigue me and for maybe similar reasons. It's the um, layering of time and of the elements that you get. And I think that's something that draws me back. I keep going back to these places uh, with the ice. 
It's cyclical. You see a mountain of ice, and you go back the next day to the same spot, and it's gone. It seems solid as a mountain, but it's gone. But going there year after year, I started to notice the, and of course, one hears, one knows about climate change, that, that, that things were warming up, that the ice was melting, and there would be problems like uh, all this slush and ice in the bay that, that um, uh, actually collected so that it made it difficult for fishing, it made it impossible for ships to come in, and that was just one of the effects. But back to Santorini, <laughs> as I was saying. Um, um, around 1600 BC, there was enorm an enormous volcanic eruption. It was perhaps the biggest, most cataclysmic eruption that has happened in human history. Anyway, according to Wikipedia, this is, <laughs> this is the case. And um, uh, scholars, uh, the, the scientists have uh, different time frames, but um, the story I first heard that made me want to go to the island was that um, uh, with, you know, there's a whole history of eruptions, but with this particular one that, um, uh, the island kind of exploded, and uh, uh, the half the island went under the sea with a caldera. And if you look at this um, map, these are little surrounding islands, but you can see. I mean, one story is is that it made an excellent port for the Minoans. And so uh, this could have been the result of an earlier um, uh, eruption. But um, in any case, uh, this one in 1600 or whatever it was, BC, um, uh, affected the whole Mediterranean with other um, eruptions and with big tsunamis, and so the, the Minoan civilization was pretty much wiped out at that time, except that now there are little archaeological finds that, that you see all over Santorini and in Crete and so on. Um, but anyway, approaching by boat, there are these enormous red cliffs, and um, uh, I've got two, two uh, views that are similar. This one, which takes in a little more, and one that's over here. Uh, and so, uh, the rock changes color, and uh, there's a layer of pumice or tuff that's, that's whitish, that's up toward the top, and then there are all the houses that, of the villages that are, it seems like it was usual to, to build from, from the top down. For one thing, um, uh, it was more protected against invasion if you uh, uh, lived on the top and you could see all around. So um, I had remembered all the whitewashed houses from my earlier trip and thought that I would be doing something with them. But in these cases, the, the um, you can hardly tell the difference between the rock and the um, houses. And that's the way it felt. It felt like uh, the, the houses were just rising out of the rock and they were part of it. And, uh, but it's usual, if, if you travel around uh, the islands, um, you'll see houses built into the side of hills and in, in, into the rock and uh, uh, there are uh, things that maybe places that look like they start out as caves then have become houses, but they're built into the rock. Anyhow, uh, I don't know how much more I want to say about these unless there are questions. And uh, we can move back to... Um, uh, 
you see the painting that's on that wall. It's a 10-part painting, and I wanted to tell you a little about that. Uh, this one um, I worked on here. I worked on it from, I want to show you a drawing here. I don't know the best way for you to whoops, see it. Uh, I'll hold it up. And if um, Odell has an idea of a better way to view it. I can zoom in. OK. So I could see part of this view from my uh, room in the little hotel that I was staying at. Uh, but then it expanded when I walked outside and walked across the street, and I saw what you see back there. So, uh, okay, I'm going to fold this up again, but you can take another look later if you like. I will be right back here. So, this was uh, <laughs> my, my view with with uh, a good view of the cliffs here, the uh, island that still has seismic activity on it back here, an abandoned factory here. And when I started working on this, I didn't realize it, but I was there two years in a row. And when I went back, I, I, I did a painting from this little park up here, so I got to know that. But, uh, um, so this this actually um, gave me some feeling for the geologic activity that had gone on here, just being in this place. I found out later that the garbage dump is over here. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the manager of the hotel was surprised that I was so interested in this. That <laughs> and I am, and I was, and it, it, it is. It's layered in a very uh, interesting way. But um, uh, so anyway, uh, the painting uh, is done on paper. Uh, Strathmore puts out a paper that's um, uh, treated for oil, and John Goodrich told me about this uh, and has been working on, on this paper. I was surprised at how absorbent it is. I tried layering it with, I can't remember what I used, some kind of glue, some kind of PVA glue, layers of it, and it was still absorbent. And this slowed me down, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing. It made me work differently. Um, in scanning the view, uh, it was a little bit like uh, uh, a moving picture <laughs> that <laughs> had 10 parts to it. Maybe it was more like uh, a folding screen, because I, am, I have been really taken with Japanese folding screens. Um, so moving across was very slow. And um, it turned out to be helpful. In, in having it fold, uh, is the interest portability, or is it actually having a, being able to see the image uh, segmented as the folds kind of do give it a kind of rhythm? Well, you know. The drawing has 10 parts, too. And uh, each section was, uh, I, I thought of as, as a whole, but to be continued. And, and, but when I did this, I thought I'd fold it like I folded this. And yeah, it's very practical to be walking around with a, a, a sketchbook that does this if one's working with something panoramic. Uh, I usually start with little scribbles. And eventually, I get to something like this if it's panoramic and otherwise maybe some other format. But what is uh, the distance between point A and point B? Maybe a couple of city blocks. Oh, okay. So you not, can not, walk not from huge. One side. You can walk from one to the other, yeah. 
I'm wondering how conscious you were, well, I guess you were, but you find so much variation in color and shading in the rock, and the water, at least from here, looks monochromatic. Um, is that because that's how you saw it, or did you want to make a nice contrast to all the complexity of the rock? Or, because new water always seems to be so complicated, and yours is the other um, well, calm. It was calm. It was calm, but that's not necessarily the reason. I mean, part of the reason is I, I didn't get to develop much of it because of the difficulty in getting into it. But once I got that blue and once I got that gold, uh, I, I was satisfied to I'm trying to remember whether I moved. I think both are true. I think that for that particular drawing that I was pretty much next to a particular tree. But, but uh, I did work from, from various points. But I think, I think your, your, the simple answer would be I was in one place. Um, yeah. But you, you were working specifically one section at a time, not the whole thing in front of you. Uh, no, I progressed from one to the next, to the next, to the next, but in stages. So there was a drawing that was continuous. And I had more than one in the accordion sketchbooks. And I tried starting from another side, too. So, but, but, this is, yeah. I think there was more to that, but. <laughs> you had a question, or? No, I just find this one very interesting because you suddenly go into the interior of things with a closer proximity. Mm -hmm. And so, how did you find these houses in terms of, you say some were in the rock itself and some were in and, and some were not within the rock, but coming from that shape. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I remember exactly, but it looks like the yellow building has uh, goes into uh, into the rock. Maybe it does, and maybe it doesn't. But it was uh, a very steep view, and I was. Uh, um, uh, this red house is right at the water's edge. I don't know oh. if you can tell, but that little there's a little streak of blue at the oh, bottom. I see. I see. Wow. Oh my God. And so that affected. Uh, I mean, the the uh, it's it's a kind of flat and steep. There was a drawing, and then there was this study, which is on a on aluminum, by the way, which I like to use. It's lightweight. And it gives me a luminosity that I feel that I don't always get if I'm uh, working on canvas. So, so I'm just trying to backtrack and, and remember uh, where I was standing. And I think it was probably around here, like around here. And so, but as I continued to work, uh, the water came in because it was there. <laughs> Is it inundated? I mean, I wonder if uh, so not, not to my knowledge, but yeah. I don't know. So uh, over here we have a, a combination of, uh, there's a little bit of uh, a Siena over here and more Santorini over here. And this is Crete. This is uh, uh, Heraklion. And this is Balos, uh, uh, which has a, a Venetian uh, ca castle or fortification on its summit. And I believe these people are walking toward it, but I can't say for sure. But uh, um, these came about because um, I had, I had uh, been on a procession 
in, in Santorini. Uh, this little church, which you see here and here, uh, Saint Minas, a, uh, a saint which is, uh, uh, I guess, particularly, uh, he must be from the East. <laughs> anyway, um, the church had been um, renovated, and its uh, main icon, which is behind you, if you will pick that up. Can you pick it up? Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. So here is Saint Minas uh, uh, riding on his horse, all in cased in silver. When was that done? Uh, I'm not sure, but it was very precious, and it was uh, kept safe in the cathedral while they were restoring the uh, church. And so there was a big procession of um, um, priests and nuns and uh, congregants and me, my, the, my <laughs> landlady from the little hotel invited me to come. And uh, it was really dramatic and it was the pouring of people down through these narrow and wider and so on that got, I, I was too blown away by, there was incense, there was uh, chanting, singing, uh, the, the, uh, the whole, uh, what was going on inside the church was just so moving that I couldn't do anything. I saw congregants taking out their cameras and snapping pictures, but I couldn't do that. So after the fact, I started shooting pictures and, and um, wherever I saw groups of people. And so this, this came from, from that. And I usually don't work with people, but um, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen next because uh, it really interests me, the relationship of the people with the land and the rock and uh, uh, it's as though, for me, it's as though they're melding with, with the uh, rock. So I think we have a little time and I'd like to, the, a number of these pieces were done on map transfers. There, there's a map underneath the, the painting. Uh, and um, so uh, with the map transfers, this all began for me um, a number of years ago by accident. I, I was in Newfoundland and I was working on a painting and it was on mylar, so it was trans the, the, the uh, paper or plastic was translucent. And I accidentally dropped it onto a map of the area, and they had the same color scheme, <laughs> my painting and the map, and uh, I couldn't separate them. <laughs> and so when I framed it, it got framed with the map. And uh, then uh, as I continued, uh, um, in Greenland, I, I collected some maps that were of the ice fjord, and I liked the maps. and. Uh, I ended up doing some transfers onto the canvas, and um, uh, I did paintings, and in which the the uh, the map was of the area that I was painting, but it was like uh, it was on a different level. Both literally, it was underneath, but it was also, uh, I think. It's a, a false idea, but it's as though the map is a permanent thing. It doesn't change. So there's something <laughs> permanent underneath these layers of change. So um, this is a, a painting of a quarry that's um, um, that I discovered. I went on a tour of a monastery, which was on the the highest uh, point in Santorini. There was a monastery dedicated to the prophet Elijah. And, uh, but looking down, I saw this incredible disturbance of the earth. And uh, uh, I guess the spiral forms attracted me too. Uh, so this is on top of a map and I like the texture that it gave. And so in deciding when to stop, 
I stopped earlier than I might have because the pinks of the ground and the textures of the map uh, all added to um, the, uh, uh, well, to the subject, I guess. Uh, this is an unfinished uh, piece that I, I had started on aluminum, and it's of, the, the, before I focused in on it, this is the sea, this is the mountain, the monastery would be here, and uh, uh, in here is the quarry. But this quarry really extended some distance. And these quarries were all over Santorini, and in 1986, they closed them down. I think it was mainly because tourism was picking up. What, what were in the quarries? What were they? Uh, pumice or tuff, it was uh, uh, a combination, I guess, of the volcanic ash and, and, and rock. And uh, there was a lot of it. And uh, used for cement in Rome. And uh, here, I'm not sure, but for building of some kind. And apparently, a good bit of it went into the building of the Suez Canal. So the port, which is over here, <laughs> uh, but you can see how the maps, uh, the map has added texture to, to uh, the rock. And you can also see how steep this road that zigzags up to the top is. This, this is the main harbor in Fira, uh, the main harbor for, for Santorini, where the ferries uh, well, is this where the ferries come in? It's the general area where the ferries come in. I, I guess there are two ports that are, are right there in that area. Um, I had rented a car, and since I'd already seen this approach by boat, um, I figured, OK, I'll drive down there. But no, <laughs> I didn't dare. Uh, I did take a taxi down, though. Could have, could have walked down, but I, I decided against that, too. But you can see the bus and the cars going up, and you can see how steep it is. Yeah. Uh, first, I enlarged them in, in just black and white. Uh, uh, you pasted the maps on, or you put Well, that was part of it. You, you uh, slather the, uh, the canvas and the paper with uh, acrylic gel, and you get it to uh, go down. You know, you, you make sure it's yeah. down well because if it's not, parts of the map will take and parts of it won't. And I kind of liked that. I mean, there, there are much more advanced ways of doing this, but um, uh, it gave me something to work with, uh, to have s little parts showing up, parts not showing up. And, uh, After, actually, I, it could be done either way. Um, um, I don't remember having any problem with buckling, but it's on over the gesso. So um, the thing that I wanted to say about both of these, which are both of the Muldrow Glacier, uh, is that uh, the maps became more prominent in both of those. Uh, someone drew my attention to the fact that I have the map upside down <laughs> in this one. Someone else pointed out, oh, uh, uh, you can see the, the lines of longitude, and they converge, and they converge on, on uh, this uh, mountain, and, uh, which is, uh, there must have been some intuitive reason. I mean, I didn't think about it. I liked the markings, and I, I was pretty abstract in my thinking about it. But anyway, uh, 
the maps come maybe more into play in this abstract way in both of these. Um, I guess because I was working back and forth, like I found the markings exciting and and I had to stop with this one before I thought I was finished with it um, because I didn't want to lose the play between the two. I mean, finished with it. I guess it's done, but, but um, uh, in terms of defining the landscape, maybe not so much, but that was my choice there. Um, Question. Yeah. I don't know how to phrase this, but um, knowing that Frederick Church painted in the Arctic and, and knowing those paintings, how do you think of them when you're working? Well, I got to Newfoundland because of Frederick Church. Uh, I, I, uh, I've forgotten the name of the book that was written about his travels to uh, Newfoundland and, and uh, Labrador. Um, but there was a particular place, Twillingate, where I liked the name for one thing, and he had seen amazing icebergs when he was there. And so uh, I had gotten a residency and I was staying near St. John, and I made the trip there and spent a few days there, and there was, they, uh, their tourist industry was based on um, uh, the icebergs, but there were none there. And that was kind of how I got to Greenland, be <laughs> because uh, uh, I asked, what happened? And someone said, well, maybe the wind changed, uh, and they, they went somewhere else on their way from Greenland. So, <laughs> so that's, that was how that happened. And speaking of global warming, tomorrow the, the climate summit begins in Glasgow. And I understand that all over, I know the churches are doing something, and uh, uh, maybe other groups today uh, to, in protest, trying to make a loud noise somehow and bring attention. The, the last uh, piece I wanted to talk about is this one uh, behind you, uh, Adele. It's, um, it's uh, from Greenland. And this is actually a view of um, where I usually sat to draw, right here. So uh, I didn't really think of painting it until this particular view until recently. But uh, the ice fjord is out that way. And uh, the icebergs were very often in that area. So you, I wouldn't necessarily see them from here, but then they do travel. Uh, but this, and the bay clears and it fills with ice and things, it, it's, it changes. Um, um, but the change is starting to, uh, uh, I mean, the ice is melting, basically. But uh, the thing about this painting is it's larger than anything uh, that I've at least done lately. And I'm, so I'm not used to working on this scale. And it was exciting to work on it because I felt like I was falling into the painting and um, uh, swimming <laughs> with, with, uh, with the movement of the water and the ice. And How did you get to that spot there, <laughs> looking at the landscape? Well, believe it or not, this is right near a power station, and there is a pretty oh. good uh, a little road that leads leads down to it, and yeah. Question more is the previous spot that you were on that you pointed to. Up here. Oh, didn't you say you were? Uh, oh, this is the this is part of the town. This is part of the town, and there's a trail. There's a trail that you can take all the way through. I mean, you don't have to get onto that road, or you don't have to be in this spot because this rock here is uh, an overlook from. There, the yellow trail that's, that's there that leads to the ice fjord. What's the little town in Ilulisat? Ilulisat is the name of the town. So. Did you see any wildlife? Not, not too 
too much to speak of. There are places where I saw seals, uh, and the Inuit do hunt seals. Um, uh, the restaurants serve whale meat. Um, no octopus. <laughs> um, yeah, I can I, there's no. Uh, no. In other places, like in, in, at, at Svalbard, I saw polar bears, and there are other places, but I guess my, the main um, attraction for me is, has been the ice. So. I don't have too much information about the wildlife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do people do in that town? What do they do to support themselves? There are fishermen, and in these towns in Greenland, um, uh, there's so much that's needed to keep the town going. The water has to be delivered to the water tanks a couple of times a week. There's things with the plumbing. Not everybody has uh, uh, plumbing. Um, so there are a lot of jobs that have to do with keeping the towns going. But then there's a growing tourist industry. Uh, and there's fishing, which is major. And as we, or some of us know, uh, there are mining interests <clears throat> now that the ice is melting. And uh, so there's a lot of research, and I don't know how much has been done yet, but. That's why Trump wants to buy it. That's why, yeah. Anyway, um, I want you to know that there is uh, another talk upstairs at 3.30. Colleen Franca is giving a talk at Bowery Gallery on the fifth floor. And uh, I'm happy to stay here and answer some questions if there are more. Um, but I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.